By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against Yoop. We've seen him on the channel before and he is back this time with a red and white aggro deck. So we've got Iron Claw Orcs, we've got Bolts, Chain Lightnings, Disenchant, Savannah Lines, all that stuff. But more about that, of course, in the deck deck. And I'm playing against him with one of my old time favorite decks because, you know, it takes me back to one of the first decks I ever owned, Mono Red Goblins. And of course, I'm also playing with Bull Lightnings in there because who doesn't love to cast a Bull Lightning and just zap your opponent for six out of nowhere? Hopefully, I can get that done today versus my opponent, Yoop. Now, before we go to the deck tech section of the video, I would like to point out that, as always, if you want to skip that, go straight to the games. I know some of you do. Please check out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on MTG Games. It'll take you straight to the action. You can also find uh, timestamps to the deck deck. So it's, it's really an easy way to kind of browse through the video at your own convenience. And uh, talking about the description, by the way, if you want to know more information about the uh, rule sets that we are playing by, because there are so many different rule sets in old school nowadays, check out that same description below for more information. And uh, we are playing according to the Swedish old school rules in this match. So if you know what that means, Good for you. If you don't, check out the description below if you're interested in that stuff. For now, we're gonna, going to continue with the uh, the deck deck section. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Let's take a look at his red and white aggro brew. And here we see the deck. Well, actually not the deck of Yoop, but some of the cards that he's playing with today. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck photo, but I do know that he's playing like pretty much what you would expect when you go red, white, aggro. So Savannah Lines, Iron Claw Orcs, Granite Gargoyle, all creatures that are relatively cheap to cast and just are able to deal a lot of damage early on and then you're going to try to finish that off with Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt. I'm not sure if he's playing with Fireball or Disintegrate, we're just going to have to wait and see. And of course, because he has access to white, he also plays with Disenchant. Now what I find interesting about his list is that he's also playing with Setch Troll and he's playing with the full playset of Setch Trolls. And of course, if you look at Setch Troll, it's just a 2-2 creature for 3, which is okay but not great. Uh, but it, get, it gets plus one, plus one if you have a swamp and also you can regenerate it for one black. So that means he's probably playing with uh, with Batlands and with Scrubland in this deck. So I'm quite curious to see if that is the case today uh, in, in this match. So we're just going to have to wait and see. I don't know, but I just assume so because he's playing with Setch Troll. I think in general, it's pretty cool to see if you can play a Setch Troll in this strategy. You know, obviously it means you got to, you know, board in some of those black cards, but Think of the dual lands, you already have access to two dual lands, meaning eight mana sources that will provide that swamp for you, that will activate that plus one, plus one, and give you the ability to actually regenerate the set troll. So I kind of, I think it's an interesting experiment. I'm not sure if he also plays with Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Knowing you, he's probably not playing with Mind Twist because he's not a big fan of the card. Um, so yeah, but Demonic Tutor, maybe? I don't know. And perhaps he's also playing with a Mox Jet. We'll just have to wait and see, don't we? Anyway, this is the deck of my opponent today. Well, some of the cards of the deck. And then now let's take a look at my deck. And here we see my Goblin deck. Oh man, I just, I love looking at this. The thing is, and maybe you've noticed that as well, you hardly see any Goblin decks anymore at tournaments. And I think the reason for that is that it's been surpassed by the Atok decks. Uh, because you can play Mono Red, with a burn strategy and just, you know, play three Atox, for example, and just your trikes and probably your Suchis, make it more like a, a red artifact Atox brew. You can play your mana vaults, you know, and, and it's probably a better deck, right? It's probably a better deck. And that's one of the reasons why you don't see goblins that much anymore or gobos as I like to call them. But fact of the matter is goblins are really, really cool. We need to keep playing goblins. You know, one of my first decks as a little Timmy was a goblin deck. So I thought, okay, what is a reason to play goblins over Atok? What does goblin have that Atok doesn't? And I looked at the goblins. I thought, okay, we have Goblin King, you know, which is a pump up anthem effect. It's great, you know, plus one, plus one to all the goblins. Remember, Goblin King is now also a goblin. So if you've got two Goblin Kings on the battlefield, they, they pump each other, right? So that's pretty good. And of course, they give Mountain Walk. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to give all my goblins Mountain Walk, all my kings are going to give each other Mountain Walk, yada, yada, yada. I want my opponent to have mountains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Blood Moon main. I'm going to play three Blood Moon main. 
And yes, I'm just hoping that I don't play against another mono player. But even if I do, all those mono players usually play with Mazes of If, Mishra's Factory, which is not in here, by the way, but I'll come back to that later. Uh, so everybody has all those special lands anyway. So the Blood Moon is always good, you know. It also takes out a Pendlehaven, for example. And my goblins hate a Pendlehaven. I mean, how is a goblin ever going to win against a 1-1 that turns into a 2-3? That's just not cool, right? So... This destroys panel havens for me, okay? So I'm, I'm really happy. So I've got blood moons, I'm making mountains, I've got goblin kings, I'm making mountain walk happening. You know, that's kind of the strategy of the deck. But then I was thinking, okay, wait a minute, if my opponent doesn't have Maze of If to, to work with, and I've got a lot of red mountains, you know, well, red mountains, that's always, you know what I mean. Uh, and then I thought, okay, wait a minute, I can play with Bull Lightning. So I decided to put four Bull Lightnings into this bad boy of a deck. That's also why I've called it uh, Goblin Bowl. I just think it's it's super cool. So these four bowl lightnings, right? I'm going to turn him sideways, going to poo, poo, poo. And then I've got, I had to put it in there, Bloodlusts. I just think they're just, it's the coolest idea to Bloodlust my bowl lightning, have 10 trample damage coming at my opponent, right? That is kind of the dream. I could even fork that and, you know, fork that Bloodlust, make it into 14 trample damage. That would be even better. And, and yeah, I mean, I was very tempted to play with green as well, to add maybe a Berserk with the, the Bull Lightning. But I was also thinking, like, I need to just do one thing. I need to stay focused, you know. And um, the Bull Lightning and the Blood Moon, those two cards are the main reason that I am actually not playing with Mishra's Factories. You hardly ever, ever, ever see an aggro strategy that is not playing with Mishra's Factories because it's just an, an insanely good card. But I've decided not to go for it because I can I can take care. I can kill the factory of my opponent with my bolts, but also I can, of course, turn it into a mountain with my Blood Moon. And then, of course, I need three red. My deck needs consistency, right? I want to cast that Bull Lightning at turn number three. And also, don't forget, I'm playing with four Goblin Kings, which also have a double red. Right, So I'm really committed to the color red. So I don't want to make it more difficult. I just want to win games on consistency. And I feel like if I start splashing all, all sorts of stuff, like for example, my opponent is doing with the set stroll, needing to splash in some black mana sources. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I just want to win this on consistency. And, and, and that's what I'm going to go for, right? So this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So on the left, on the play is my opponent, Yoop, playing red-white aggro, starting with a Savannah Alliance, passing the turn to me. I'm playing mono red goblin bowl. So four goblin king kings, four bowl lightnings. And uh, yeah, just a lot of aggression. So we both have really fast decks. So this could be a really quick episode here, starting with a Mox Ruby and a Mountain. There's a Black Vice that's at least going to do one point of damage and a Bolt here on the Lion. So I'm already doing something I don't want to do, which is bolting, um, you know, the line instead of the opponent. Anyway, it's impossible, by the way, to check Yoop's score. Look at his, his small little... It's really cool. It's one of those uh, those old life counters. It's pretty, pretty neat, but it's very hard to check his life total. But I'll keep you up to date. He just dropped to 19 because of the... Uh, the Vice, he's now out of Vice range already. I think Black Vices are not very good against this deck. Now I'm playing a Goblin King, so that's a 2-2, and that gives Mountain Walk and plus one, plus one to all the other Goblins. Remember, Goblin King is now also a Goblin. So he's probably going to attack here with the Savannah Lines. Perhaps uh, he's going to kill my Goblin King, or maybe play out an Iron Claw Orc or a Granite Gargoyle. I guess I'm lucky here because he's doing neither, just passing the turn. Okay, it looks like I'm... Yeah, I'm not drawing my card. I thought maybe I want to do something before draw. Attacking for two, so my opponent here is going to drop to 17. And I'm also passing the turn. This is really bad. I just want to play goblins and burn and stuff. So this is not great. It's looking really good for my opponent. There's a set troll, and I remember it's still a 2-2 because he doesn't have a black source. There's the attack with the Savannah line. I'm going to drop to 16, so Yoop is still on 17 here. Playing a lightning bolt. On the set stroll, yeah, because there's no black yet, so he cannot regenerate it, so I'm kind of seeing an opening. But again, I'm not doing what I want to do. I want to spend these bolts on my opponent's life total, not on his creatures. Anyway, attacking him for two, he's going to drop to 15. I'm on 16 at the moment. He's probably going to drop uh, to 14 when he attacks me. There's an Iron Claw Orc, and he's going to attack me, put me on 14. I'm going to untap here, so Yoop is at 15 at the moment. Let's see what I can do. Bull Lightning, Bull Lightning, Bull Lightning. 
Oh, Blood Moon. Okay, Blood Moon is also cool. You know, it's it's turning those two dual lands into mountains, but it's not the best. And he's going to float a white, I think. So he's probably just going to disenchant it anyway. I don't really mind. I got to do something. I think, to be honest, Yoop is really winning this game because I need, like, creatures or whatever. Yeah, there's a disenchant. Hard to see with the Galera, but that was a disenchant here on the uh, Blood Moon. Let's see what else he can do. I'm expecting more creatures, actually, to come from his side of the table. Although his hand must be pretty close to being empty. Because he's played a land and a, a spell every single turn. Attacking here for four. Probably going to put me... Oh, I'm going to block here. It's a bit of a surprise that I'm blocking. Going to go to 12. I'm not sure if this is the right decision. You know, to trade here for a line. It looks like a very bad trade. Tapping three. Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Okay, well, maybe that wheel can bring me some more luck. Am I going to get some bolts to the face here? I really think it was a bad decision to block the lion. Okay, so he's going to disenchant the, uh, yeah, going to disenchant the vice here. I think I really should have should have taken two damage more. I would have been on 10, but now if I draw into like a goblin, which is very likely with the goblin deck, the goblins are 2-2, two -two, you know. Let's see what I can do. Playing a new one and playing a Goblin Balloon Brigade. Okay, so at least I've got, you know, I've got some potential in hand. But remember, of course, Yoop also just drew seven new cards. Let's see what he can do. There's a Mox Ruby. Tapping the Ruby for a Sol Ring. I was expecting some burn. It's a Sol Ring instead. That's not too bad. I'm still alive. Tapping a red, chain lightning, and I'm tapped out, so I cannot send it back. That's very unfortunate. It would have been so sweet to also kill his Iron Claw Orc here. There's his Havana Alliance. Yeah, I'm back in trouble again. I'm just, it's as simple as that. I'm back in trouble. Even more creatures, Granite Gargoyle, 2-2 two -two Flyer, that he can pump for one red plus O plus one. Attacking here with the Iron Claw, I'm on 10. Remember, Yoop is still on 15. I mean, he's doing really, really well, and I can't even damage him now. And remember, Yoop still has two red open to pump his gargoyle if I have, for example, a burn spell. And it looks like I'm using my strip mine on his plane, so probably have a blood moon here, so he only has red mana from that point forward. Of course, it's risky if he has a disenchant, he can, you know, make a white flowing, uh, floating, I mean, and then... Uh, Play a disenchant. Let's see what I can do. A little bit into tank here, it seems. I was expecting a blood moon. Tapping three. There's a bull lightning, though. Attacking here for six. Six one trample. I mean, he can take the damage. He's on 15. Does he want to take the damage? Could, of course, also jump it on the gargoyle, pump the gargoyle, and just. Take two damage, he would drop to 13. I think that's another option that he could take. Or if he has, of course, a bolt, he can bolt it, which is kind of a flavor fill, but it works. So I guess he doesn't have a bolt or else he would have done it already. So it's really a little bit in the tank here, trying to decide what to do with this damage. I mean, he knows he's playing against a burn deck. You really don't want to go below 10. Am I gonna... Do I have a bloodlust? Bloodlust! Dealing 10 points of damage here. That feels really good. Or are we going to see a bolt? No. Okay, so now he's going to drop to five. And all of a sudden, this one play has brought me back into the game. He's on five. I'm on ten. If I can just find a little bit of burn. There's a scrubland. There's a set troll. So he can regenerate it with the scrubland. And it's now a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, I'm still in a bad position, but the fact that he's on five, that kind of gives me some, some breathing space. There's an attack here with the Iron Claw Orc and the Savannah Lions. So I, I could, for example, block the Lions here. Then again, if I draw into... Yeah, blocking the Lions. If I draw into a Goblin King, I could have, you know, given my Goblin Balloon Brigade, made it 2-2 in Mountain Walk, and I could just... Uh, Put him on three, and then, in, then he's in bolt range. Tapping three. 
mm, I was hoping for another Bull Lightning. Remember, I'm playing four Bull Lightning in this deck. And passing to turn you. So it does mean that the set troll is now again a 2 2, but I'm really in trouble here. He can hit me for six, put me on two. Yeah, I'm going to drop to two here. That means I'm in bolt range. Remember, my opponent is also playing four bolt, four chain. And even if he doesn't have them in hand, he's got probably going to kill me next turn. I mean, this is going to be super rough. Okay, yeah, there's a chain. There's a chain. And I take the damage before I can send it back, so I can't even send it back. Doesn't matter though. Anyway, uh, this is the end of the line for me in game number one, but I did love that Bull Lightning Bloodlust play. So maybe, you know, if I can time it a little bit better, I feel I got a chance against this deck, but for now I'm one game down. Game number two, here we go. So I'm on the play after losing that first game. So let's hope I draw into a vice, right? That would be ideal. There we go, Black Vice turn one. This is what I want to do, because at least now Black Vice equals a bolt, right? Three damage for you, Pierce. So he's going to drop to 17. Going to try to keep you up to date on his life total again. There's a soul ring. I'm actually kind of happy with that. That's fine. I mean, next turn it means he can play out like, like a Sag or Gargoyle, whatever. But at least for now, it's fine. There's a chain lightning to the dome. So he's going to drop to 14. I would love to have a goblin follow up, but I don't pass him the turn. He's going to take one point of damage, I believe. He's going to drop to 13. Actually going to take two points, of course, because he's on the draws. So he's going to drop to 12. There's a Plateau, and there's an Iron Claw Orc. Remember, we're playing Swedish, so no mana burn. So a 2-2. Tapping 3, is there going to be a Goblin King? Goblin King on the board. So 2-2 gives other Goblins plus 1, plus 1, and Mountain Walk. The problem, of course, with the King is, can you keep it alive? The King usually dies fairly quickly. There's a Badlands, so... I wonder if we're going to see a set troll. There's a Mox Pearl attack for two here. Going to take two points of damage. Drop to 18. And passing to turn here. So four mountains. Attacking here with the Goblin King. Going to put my opponent here on 10, I believe. There's a Goblins of the Flark. Okay, that's kind of nice, of course, because my opponent is playing with Mountain. So Goblins of the Flark, a 1-1 one, one from the dark with Mountain Walk. There's again an attack. Going to drop to 16. And hopefully for me, my opponent just draws like duds, like a disenchant and some lands. That would be ideal. He's not playing any creatures out, so that's kind of kind of cool. The Vice, of course, not doing any work anymore. Do I have another Goblin King? I do. This is ideal. Look at this. A 3-3 Goblin King and a 2-2 Goblins of the Flark. I can hit him here for 5. Having his life total. He's on 5 now, I believe. If I count it correctly, perhaps he's even lower. But I believe he drops here from 10 to, to 5. Let's first see if maybe he has a response. I mean, one bolt would make a lot of difference. He could bolt the attacking king. That would mean he only takes 2. But, I mean, the, the fact that he has to think this long probably means he's got nothing. He does have a bolt. Okay, wow. Okay, that makes a big difference. So that means he's going from 10 to 8. He only takes 2 points of damage instead of 5. That is unfortunate. I already put him on 5. I would say, uh, yeah, he's on 8. That makes a big difference. But at least I still have one of the kings. I think in game 1 that was a big misplay by me. You know, blocking the Savannah lines with the Goblin King. Just go to 10, who cares? You got to keep your Goblin King. They're too important in my deck. Anyway, let's see what Yoop's going to do here. Ironclaw Orc on the table. I mean, he can attack offering to trade. What else can you do here? Taking the damage, of course, dropping to 14. He's got a lot of mana. I mean, I don't know if he plays with Fireball, but a Fireball would be quite good here. Earthquake, wow. Wow, that's kind of the same idea. At least Earthquake is a little bit less worse. Because it also hurts my opponent, so he's going to drop to 6, I believe. This is a really good move. This is a really nice two for one. Well, he's losing his own Iron Claw. I, I guess so it's a two for two, but still it's super good, of course, for him. And again, I'm losing those Goblin Kings. That's, that's the hard part when you've got a strategy with a Goblin King, or you probably recognize it if you play blue with uh, um, Lord of Atlantis. It's just really tough. Or, or Enchantress, any, four, any, any strategy that you build around you know, creatures is, is tough. 
disenchant here on the vice. I wonder why he does that. Perhaps he's got a Wheel of Fortune in hand. I've played a Goblin Balloon Brigade, and I, I believe it's a pass for me. Only one card in hand, it seems. There's a balance. Okay, that's why he did it. Do I have a Bolt in hand? Bolting my opponent here, so he's going to be dropped to three, if I'm correct. And look at that. He wanted to keep that wheel. Now he's going to lose the wheel. That was his plan. Balance, keep the wheel in hand. Probably hoping that I had a land or something. But, uh, wow. Now we're both top decking. And I think it's looking really good for me. For the simple reason that my opponent is on three. So if I just top deck a chain lightning or a bolt, I win. If my opponent top, top decks the same, he's just going to put me from 12 to 9. So both in top decking mode here in game number two. Right? Remember, I lost the first game, so I need to win this if we want to go to a game number three. There's the Savannah Lions. Attacking here. Going to go to 10. Drawing a card, passing the turn. Two cards in hand. Gonna drop to eight. Oh, this is bad. Is he gonna win this on a lion? I need a creature. That's what I need. What do I have in hand? What are those two cards? I want to know what those two cards are. Oh, I'm bolting him. So I guess my opponent is not on three, but he's on four then. Or else I wouldn't have bolted the lion, of course. There is another mountain and another lion. Oh no! Drop to six. Oh, this is so bad. Am I gonna lose it here? Am I gonna lose it? There's a juggernaut. Oh, I really need a burn spell. I need a burn spell. No, I'm gonna be hit here for seven. What do I have? A bloodlust. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. That is not cool. That is not cool. I felt like I felt like I was in a really good shape when we started top decking. I thought he was on three, but apparently he was on four. <sighs> I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'll be honest with you. But um, it happens. The good news is though, we did play a game number three, so stick around. I, I want you to show I want to show to you that my goblins can win. Hopefully I can make that happen in game number three. Game number three, here we go. So I've already lost, but I want to win a game. I want to show you guys that my deck, my deck's good. My deck's better than this. Anyway, starting with the vice, passing the turn. So that means he's going to drop to 17. There's a chain lightning. Okay. So he's got six in hand. I'm dropping to 17 as well. Another mountain. Chain lightning. Okay, putting him on 14. I believe he should have six in hand now, right? So he would take two damage, going to go to 12. If I'm not mistaken, you know, already made a mistake in the previous game, but I think he's on 12. Let's see what else he, uh, what else he can do here. Scrubland passing. This is good news for me. Tapping three. There's a Goblin King. I keep hoping to find, like, you know, my, uh, my Bull Lightnings. Haven't found a lot of those. We saw one in game one. There's a Fireball on the Goblin King. That's unfortunate. He also took some damage, I believe. So he's on 10, I think. Let's see what I can do. Four Mountains. Passing the turn, not doing anything. That's bad. Oh, no. Looks like he's taking another damage, dropping to nine. There's a Juggernaut, though. That is pretty good. Let's see if I have anything against a Juggernaut. There's another Mountain. Tapping three. Okay, there's a Bull Lightning. At least that's something. I think I can, I think I can put him really low if, if he doesn't block this. There's a Bloodlust, and he is blocking it, so he's going to take seven points of damage. I believe he's going to drop, like, super low. I think he's, like, on two or something. It's so hard to see with that counter. I'm on 17. He's like just super low. I think he's in bolt range. Tapping four. What do I have? Oh, eternal flame. I, I put internal flame in there. I didn't know. So I guess my deck photo isn't that accurate. But eternal flame, such a cool card from the dark. 
It reads, uh, deal an X amount of damage to your opponent equal to the mountains you have, and I take half of that damage myself as well. Right, so he's taking uh, six points of damage, and I'm taking three points of damage. And that's the end of the road for my opponent. Well, I mean, he's, he's won the match. Fair enough, you've, you've won two to one, but I mean, come on. Oh, Mana Barbs coming in from the sideboard. That's the sideboard card I use against uh, COP Red. We haven't really talked about the sideboard, uh, by the way. Wasn't on a deck photo. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the match. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about Goblin decks. Y you know, do you play your Goblin deck Mono Red, kind of my style? Or do you play it maybe with a splash of green in there or a splash of white? Or, you know, let me know. Or do you think that Goblin decks are simply kind of outdated? Um... I guess it's never outdated, right? A goblin deck can never be outdated, but maybe that's your opinion. Let me know if you, if you feel that way. Um, anyway, thank you, Yuk, for yet again another uh, another fun game, another fun matchup. It's always nice to see your decks. Um, and yeah, I think I think that the game, the match as a whole was pretty close. I'm really happy to have won that game three to kind of show you that my goblin deck can actually work and do stuff. I think in game one, if I would have played it slightly different, I could have won that. And of course, game two, we were in a top decking scenario. And I guess uh, you just had the better, the better draws there. That can happen, uh, of course, as well. You know, it is what it is. A big part of magic is also, of course, the luck of the draw, especially when you're both playing with similar aggro strategies and burn spells. Anyway, uh, this was the the episode for today. If you like what you see, please take a moment to like, share, and comment. Uh, the, all that is free and really helps the channel move forward. And before you go, please take a moment to check out patreon.com slash timmytalks because there you can uh, find out how you can support the channel financially as well. So if you want to help me as a content creator, please consider taking a subscription on patreon.com slash timmytalks. Uh, it already starts with $1 a month. And for that, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in the Timmy Talks tournaments. And of course, you're helping... Uh, a, a content creator that you enjoy so please consider becoming a patron of the show talking about patrons let's take a look at the end scroll and see who my fantastic amazing wunderbar channel members and patrons actually are let's go to that end scroll Somebody can see.